Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, we have a case of uh, osteoculoplasty with glacionomeric cement. And our patient is a young lady. Okay. Ja, to załatwię. Mów. Um, and she's suffering from right ear um, conductive hearing loss since uh, for uh, something like five, six years. In her early childhood, she underwent some minor um, procedures due to effusion in the middle ear, like tympano, uh, tymp like ventilation uh, tube placement. And, um, and then she has developed um, Przemoczy na mikroskop. Okay, so we we go. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much for Monica for presentation at the beginning. Uh, I'm Peter. So we, together with, with Professor Henrik, we make the surgery now. Welcome again. Uh, we had a little bit bleeding. It was really at the beginning, as Monica mentioned, the, the retraction pocket, which were really significant, and the history. Uh, it was not nice because it was several years with that, so the patient was not uh, visit an ENT. Some uh, visits at GP with regular otoscopy when there was not any claims that there was the retraction pocket. And you can see we have two issues. The first, there is not connection between the long process of incus and uh, the head of the stapes. Now we can see the head of the stapes. And additional, there is a little bit uh, uh, position of the long process of the incus is a little bit not classical, so we, it's a little bit carved. Uh, so we have to be really sure, we, we will see now the cement procedure. We have to be sure that, that first the ends of the bones are dry, because uh, it's, be, it's better connectivity. And the second is uh, that the connection will be proper, because it's not typical, we have a little bit distance between Same. the bones. From the results, uh, I remember very nice round table with Professor Adrian in Romania some years ago. You can see the cement now. On the, if we connect ossicles. The, 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 during the first year, first three years even, the results are really almost perfect. If there will be, of course, not a retraction pocket. And then we have to re-observe the patient how it's going uh, situation later because sometimes the cement is not as robust and the, con the con connection between bones is a little bit less, is less it's not as strong as at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's always our first choice in such situation. We first use the glacionomeric cement and then if uh, after some years there will be not enough good results, then we could switch for some prosthesis, but it, honestly it happens very, very rare. Now we dry, we dry the cement. We would like to add some more cement for, for the stronger connectivity, especially due to the, that some distance between the obstacles. Do you have any questions for, for that? I know it's not it's not the time which is recommended to dry. We dry when we see, and then we will check how are, how are the movements in general. So if we have a little bit bleeding like now, it takes a little bit more. It could be some minutes. If there is really dry, there's not at all bleeding and not fluid. It's it's less. You can see now we see the connectivity between two bones. 
now. So it took us around, as I could see, one minute forty seconds. It's around three. Quick. It's, it's very quick because the, the situation, as you can see, we stop the bleeding uh, quite fast, so there's not a problem with that. When we have bleeding, it's much more problematic. But the background for that is really to dry bones before we put the cement. It's the common uh, mistake which we see after with re surgery that uh, the, the, the whole block went out. It means that it was not enough dry before the before the glass cement was. Uh, uh, was was applied. When we sometimes it happens that we make resurgery because less connectivity, but it's like a taper, you know. So we have two two small tapers from one bone and second bone, so uh, not whole block is taken out. And especially it happens much more often when there could be the eustachius tube uh, problems and when the retraction is going back. So, now you can see we check with the movements with the mallows and the whole structure is uh, now is, is, is movable. So yeah, it's moving, you can see, so it's... Okay. Uh, there are there are there are two options. Uh, they could come at the morning surgery and they always spend at least one night. And but much more often we make we take them one day earlier at the evening afternoon, and then we start surgery at 7 a.m. So they are very early morning. So all the uh, examinations are performed before the day before surgery. If we need to you know to check if there are not some other options. But always one, one, one day, it's at least one day at hospital. It's our rules which are, are here. Now, now it is a fibring, fib, no, it's tissue glue. It's tissue, fiber, fiber, fibering, fibering glue between, for the tympanomatal flap, yeah. And now, and now we make for the foil and it's, it's taken out around seven days after the surgery. So it's also typical. You know, we, we prefer to make it the foil in the color, like blue or red, but it's five to ten times more expensive than uh, than regular. So, and we and we have you know like 50 surgery per day. It's it's significant cost. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much.